happened. Go ahead. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I, I guess, you know, without getting too far into to our, you know, our detail and what we and what our messaging is, I think our, we have three P's and the first one is just pressure. So when we don't have the puck, we want to be sure that we're reacting to it, regardless of where you are on the ice. Um, a little backstory on some of these girls, like this girl who's taking the draw is um, never played forward before. It's played only to just had played D. Um, and this girl back here has just only played forward. Um, and we had given the girls, uh, we played six games in the tournament and we had said, hey, uh, everybody's gonna rotate positions. We went left D, uh, sorry, left wing, left D, center, right D, right wing, and then back to um, left wing. And we told them before the tournament, hey, these are your positions that we're playing. Um, we're one, two, three, four, five, first two on the puck, you know, three kind of mirroring and four or five above. But anyway, so uh, the three Ps are uh, pressure, possession, and play. So uh, pressure, obviously closest to the puck, we're pressuring. Possession, we want to have three, three areas of support and then play once you have it, we want to attack um, and attack open ice uh, with the puck. And so again, th those are our, those are our messaging and try to make it as, um, as simple as possible to just try to, you know, you know, to get them to play as we, or as organic as possible. So I'll, I'll go through the clip here, this, this girl here, she loses the draw and you can see right off the start here, um, number 80 jumps right on and she's on top of it. Um, and so, and, and again, I'll, I'll let this try to talk as least about as possible, but you know, now we, now we're talking about, Hey, we want to get support options. So we want three support options. So, you know, ideally, you know, we've got a girl coming on the back and we've got someone coming on the other side. I'd like to see someone coming through the middle of the ice, but you know, Nice little drop pass here again. Again, they're they're recognizing the pressure. Um, they're pretty passive on the on the on the other side. There's a first shot. She hangs it, rings it off her off off her head. Great job by this girl trying to grab it, grab ice, puck protect. Again, attack. Second one off the head. Second shot. Again, quick on the puck. I'm closest to the puck. Looking for options. See the girl in the front again. There's another shot. Three. Another. Puck protect here. Now, hey, we're fighting girl going behind the net for, for options. Girl on the boards, 21 there going for options. Good puck protect here, right? Understanding that. Now this girl attacks ice again. Right now, girl from behind the net there, 92 goes behind the net again for support options. Recognizes ice and then a little bit of a wrap. So again, um, have never talked about um, crossing and scissoring and, and everything else just just as far as not throwing the puck away pressuring it pressuring when we're closest uh support on possession and then attacking ice Tom, I, I find it hard to believe you've never talked it and i believe you do you think they've watched the nhl quite a bit those girls i don't i don't, I don't think so wally there was there's maybe one one girl she's pretty driven she'll she'll watch a lot of hockey uh, that that uh, off that group um but you know uh i think some have watched i think instagram maybe a little bit they've watched some like i'd say of the five girls on that on the ice i'd say one maybe watched the other one maybe watched a little bit of instagram just in the some of the clips that, that constantly come up um but other than that i would i would be shocked and i can ask i'd be shocked if any of those watched any clips well, I think it'd be worth asking to follow up just for the yeah. theoretical part of coaching. Yeah. I'm going to ask you now if we can both be quiet so the viewers can watch it without stopping and be as amazed as you and I are.
Um, I want to, <clears throat> just having watched that, I've got a, another thing I want to mention and about the way you approached your coaching and uh, how difficult it was for the coaches that assisted you to not tell them and how, even for yourself, how you were sort of <laughs> thinking of telling them and it didn't work. And, and uh, just getting buy-in with this team and the coaching staff and the parents and we may get to it later where you said um, you have to coach you're coaching the parents you don't have to coach your girls because they can play like that already as you're discovering so i wonder if you could get into that a bit in terms of the the change in the mindset it's it, this is really doing things differently from what coaches are accustomed to yeah and 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 you know, we have the, you know, just like I'm sure any, any other team, we have, you know, parents that are, um, that really want to help and they really want to help their daughters and they really want to support them. And, um, you know, the demographic where we're in is that people have the ability to be, uh, you know, to help on the ice and, and, and everything else. And what I found was, is that um, when you started to, to, um, have them to kind of this self-discovery of practicing is that uh, coaches and myself included were felt this over uh, this urge to give them the answers um, felt felt that if we weren't seeing what we wanted to see then you know we'd say well just you know we're for instance we were doing uh, an angling drill one of the days is we do pressure which is angling um, and so you know if if the girl was stopping as opposed to continuing forward skating and later momentum. And instead of letting her figure that out and watching the other girls, the ones that were doing it well, there was this inherent desire from the other coaches to go in and be like, hey, if you don't stop and you continue your edges going forward, you're going to be able to catch her. Um, and so to be able to, 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 articulate that with the parents and get them to understand what we were doing from the standpoint of, hey, for them to organically understand how to play, they're gonna have to figure this out on their own and they're gonna have to recognize, you know, why are they holding onto the puck? Why are they protecting it in a scenario? Why, why when they look and they try to make a pass and they're telegraphing it, why is, are they not able to make the pass? So, you know, as frustrating it is as it is to say, hey, well, just fake a pass and go the other way. They had to come to that realization themselves because they need to understand like what stimulus are they looking for? Is it, you know, like, are they looking for the opposition's stick? Are they looking for their eyes? So um, we've had, it was, it's been, a, it's been, um, you know, a revelation for me as well to be under, to understand Okay, these parents are 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 well intended, wanting to help, um, and the messaging and and their talk to their kids is is tenfold from the FaceTime that I'm going to get. I get I get a 45 minutes or an hour uh, ice time with them. You know, maybe our my interactions with the girls is let's let's say best case scenario is let's say it's five minutes. If I and, and if I'm doing my job, I'm probably not talking that much on, on the ice and trying to, but they're the ones that are going to be driving home with their kids at home and everything else. And so if you don't have the understanding from, um, from the parents that this is something that they have to figure out, like that's ultimately you've got, if you have 15 girls, you have 15 coaches for the most part And this and where we are, there's the odd, there's the odd parent that just basically washes their hands and like, we trust you guys. But for the most part, um, it's this inherent desire to help their kids along. And that's great. So, but to be able to, and so I found, the need to have to I'll call parents right inside the video and to have them understand. And I want them asking me questions because if they don't understand it, I can, I can guarantee um, that misunderstanding will be transmitted to their, to their kid in, in, you know, however that shapes out. So. Dominic, I've got.
the question. You told me a story about a coach on the bench and uh, talking about somebody didn't protect the front of the net and he was, can you, can you tell that story and how sure. his mind, he, you know, he's like a parent and he probably is a coach on the bench parent. Yeah. But just tell that story because I think this is, this is hard for us to uh, do because we, we do what he wanted to do all the time. Go ahead. Yeah. So, and um, yeah, there, the parent on the, co on, on the bench and, um, you know, one of these, he was, and, and, the, and the parent was, had played high level basketball at, at uh, um, you know, a really reputable university. Um, and uh, I think really, you said McGill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't want to start throwing it out there, but yeah, I mean, and I love having conversations with him, right? Like he really wants to delve into the, to the nuts and bolts of why we're doing things. And I mean, and, you know, full disclosure, he'll say, hey, I, I, I don't really understand the game, but um, understands basketball really, really well. And so we're playing a tournament and, and it's, you know, all the top teams in, in, um, you know, in, North, in uh, the States anyways, because obviously with COVID and um, it's, it gets competitive. You're on the bench and you see the girls are doing well. And, um, you know, games are close. Games are three, one, two, one, we're up, we're down. And we're having breakdowns where, you know, we've got, five girls five girls in the corner there's girls left standing alone in front of the net and i can hear the chatter i can hear the chatter coming from from coaches and like oh we need somebody in front of the net right and so you know i kind of let it go a, a, a little bit i wasn't going to obviously you know talk about it within the within the play and so then uh really there was between periods or as after the game and i could tell that they're you know they wanted to ask the question and they're like, Oh, we're, we're, you know, we just got breakdowns. we got someone in front of the net. We just need to put somebody in front of the net. And I just said, yeah, I, I, I can understand that. I understand that if, if, you know, on the surface, we just put somebody there. Like we feel like we solved that problem. I said, the reason why there's somebody in front of the net is because the first two people that are pressuring, uh, you know, don't have a good stick maybe not angling in the way that they should. And the third player uh, is, you know, potentially not reading the situation as to where the most dangerous player is. And four and five, like we talked about being kind of like your safety valve are slow to react, like they're slow to react. So, but by saying we need somebody just to stand in front of the net, now you're basically taking away all the ability of, of, of all the five uh, to be able to read the situation and to be able to adapt to how we're playing. And it's going to be counterproductive in the way that, in the way that we're, we're playing. So just this explanation, um, you know, and then as we progressed, and that was game one. And so as we progressed in the tournament and he could start to see the other teams we're throwing pucks away, icing pucks. We were turning pucks over. And yeah, hey, we still had these same, you know, same pitfalls, if you will. A lot of times, sometimes they get it and they just they just chuck it to the net and try to catch us that way a little bit. Um, but now he, instead of now saying, we need somebody in front of the net, they started to understand and they started to message, hey, we need to have a good stick. We need to push them to the outside. We need to we angle F1, F2, have to angle F3, most dangerous player, four and five. Now it's gone from side to side. You've got to work your way back. So now it started, to, now I had, instead of having someone saying, oh, we need somebody in front of the net. Now it was, they were, they were on board and their, their messaging was, um, you know, just all, all pushing in, in the, in the right direction, the same direction. Um, the same girl, and I don't know if I've told you this part, Wally. So the same, we had, a, after the game, we asked the girls, well, what do we, what do we see girls? Like, what, what did we see? And his daughter said, we got nobody standing in front of the net. And I could see everybody else looking at all the girls, my girls, I have two girls that are on the team. My two girls look at me like, oh boy, what's he going to say? Like, what, like, how is he going to, and, and, you know, so I, I applauded her for, asking a question i said that's great because i can see by the way that you're playing that 
you're tentative and unsure of where you should be. You're not reacting and you've got this, these questions. So I said, girls, we're not, I'm not here for you to tell me exactly what I want to hear. I said, I'm not playing. I said, you're the ones that are, the, are, that are feeling this. So if you have this type of question, that's fantastic that you're asking me because I, that's, that's telling me, because I can see that. But if you're, but you know, so we gotta, we, we gotta, you know, get on that same wavelength. And my girls, like my daughter, my oldest daughter looked at me and she's like, she's like, are you joking? Like, I could tell, like, she didn't really articulate it, but I could tell she was like, are you serious? Like, I, I can actually say what I want, <laughs> what I'm thinking as opposed to what I think you want to hear. So it was a great coaching moment because it's basically, it, it, started to give a little more trust in the, in the fact that, hey, we're asking you questions, but I'm not just trying to get you to say what you think I want us to hear. Like, like legitimately, if you feel like we're not putting something in front of that, I want to hear it because then now we can talk about it, so. Now, you mentioned, <clears throat> you know, the, the tournament, I remember talking to you during it, your team had played the top team in the States and you know, lost something like seven, nothing, but you were ecstatic uh, about how well they played. Yeah. Well, and uh, yeah. And then I should, I've got some clips and Molly, I, 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 I'll pick some clips and I'll show them to you because, you know, when I watch with the, uh, the beauty of live barn and they have these rankings and everything else and whatever they are, but you're able to watch these other teams. Like I was able to watch this, this team from Philadelphia play before we played against them. They had beat teams, 15, nothing, 12, nothing like they were. And so they're good. They were good. They had big girls. I could skate. They could, they could do all these things. And so when we started to play against them, I was, Hey, I was, I was a little apprehensive that we would get physically, um, you know, dominated, maybe the girls would get dis discouraged, whether, you know, I, I wasn't sure what was going to happen. So as we started to play the game and the pressure we were putting them on and the girls reacting and angling and everything else, we were with them. Like we were, like we were, and I, I didn't, I've got the, the beauty of our, uh, someone doing chances and he hasn't come back with that game, but we were close chance wise. The goals we gave up were pinball goals where one went off of a skate and another one was just a, you know, we made a pass that deflected and they ended up getting a chance, but we outchanced them in the first period, second period. It was right. Like, so I, and what I was seeing is, is that our girls were going back for pox and they were doing their, their one, two, two, right. One, one on the puck, two taking the boards away, three coming down the dot lane and they were there, but they weren't there because our girls would go back to the puck, they'd look, they'd see, they'd feel the pressure, they'd turn up. All of a sudden now they're coming up ice. Now the other girls are looking around like, what, like, what, do, what do we do? Like, it was almost like they anticipated, you know, whether us throwing it around or the first girl being able to pinch her off. And so we were making plays. And that to me, it was just, it was just incredible to watch. We were making plays, we were, we were turning pucks over, we were getting chances. And it was organic. It was organic in the way that, you know, and that was really girls playing quote unquote out of position. We had girls that were forwards that were playing D and, 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 and D playing forwards. Um, and again, just that organic reacting to the puck decision-making play that just, I had goose, I had goosebumps watching it because you could just see Hey, listen, if this girl's played together and played this way for an extended period of time, I don't know. I'm really excited of, of uh, how well they're going to get or, or how, how, um, how well they're going to be able to play together. That's, I guess that's, that's it. Dominic, I, I watched a little bit of the first game. I, I would say about five, maybe seven minutes. And I think I texted you. They're playing, and I put that in quotation marks. It was incredible. I saw that in the first game. Um, and you went through the tournament, and you you uh, managed to do that on the power play. So the overall week was a learning experience for you, the parents that, that were there, and the parents at home that were on Live Barn, whose 
didn't realize the voice communication does go two ways, but you know, the, I, I talk, that's a good thing because now it, being honest with one another about what you're doing and not every coach is going to be as, uh, you know, experienced as you and articulate as you, but we've got to be willing to listen to parents because um, they're going to be coaching their kids on the way back and forth. But overall, the learning experience of the week the story you told me when they got home and uh, the effect of that weekend and, and uh, the first morning of practice. Can you talk about that? Yeah, because so just to give you a little bit of the dynamics. So we're an 06, 07 team. Um, you know, we've got them pretty much categorized in three blocks. We've got a an 06 group, which are kind of our stronger players. And then we have the next group, which is mostly majority 06. And then we have an 07 group, which is, they're younger. They're, um, but they're the, you know, they're the better, they're the best 07s um, of, that we, we kind of have. And the 07 group, uh, they, they were a little bit, there were, so there are five of them, six of them rotated a bit they were a little bit under the gun and a little bit overwhelmed a little bit in regards to the size and the speed of, of the weekend. It was something that was, they hadn't really experienced. And so, you know, I was a little bit, you know, not concerned, but I was just, you know, I, I thought to myself, Hey, there was, there was a, there was a lot for them to take in. And, and, and uh, so we came back and we were flew, but we flew back on, uh, on a Monday, I think, People flew back late Sunday, late Sunday night or Monday, and so we practiced again on on it was Wednesday, I think, and um, you know time change and everything else, and and combined with the fact we played six games in three days, and so I was, you know, I was thinking in my head, I was like, oh geez, this might be a little bit or a little bit too much. In pre the last year, um, every time you know the girls would come back from a trip, I wasn't able to go on the trip, but every time they'd come back, the practice after, I always found it. Yeah, it just seemed that they seemed tired. And I attributed that to time change. And I attributed that to, um, you know, they, they hadn't done so well in the tournament. I don't think they scored a goal the last time they went to Detroit last year. Um, and so I, I, I was anticipating the same. Um, and so we have a dry land, which uh, a dry land that runs, you know, 45 minutes before the practice. And with COVID and everything else, they, they, they show up just before dry land normally. Uh, Cause you can't go in the rink and then they do the 45 minutes and then you go on the ice. I got there and I thought the practice time was changed because it was, it was, I think we we're like maybe supposed to be dry land at five. Let's, let's call it seven, seven. And so I got there a little bit early um, and everybody was already there. And I, I thought to myself, I'm like, okay, well maybe I got the wrong time. And they just wanted to be, the girls were just there because they wanted to be around each other and so I thought oh this is great they're getting along really well this you know and then we got onto the ice and I and because of COVID uh we have to split the groups so I have the 07s on the one side the 607s on one side and then there's the the uh the 06s on the other and again I was anticipating to 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 have to you know to to you know bump up the the spirit to some of these girls that had been really strong players uh, from the previous year in U12. Um, and what I found was these girls were buzzing. They were, they were just, you know, skating so well and they were just upbeat and they were making plays. And, they, and it was, to me, I was like, like, this is unbelievable. Like, because they were just, as I say, there was no, they were just, they were enjoying the game. They were enjoying being there. They were, and, and the, they were, the way they were making plays and passing and, and everything else. And I wish we, I could say that it was, you know, some, something that we had said, but I, I, I just truly really believe that the freedom for them to be able to play is just enable them every, and every time we're on the ice, you just see it more and more and more, their confidence with the puck, their ability to try different things. Like, you know, it's just been, that's been phenomenal. Dom, 
uh, outstanding. I'm, I'm sure glad we got you joining the Sharks on Thursday morning because uh, as you know, it, it's a real learning opportunity. And, yeah. and what you're doing is, um, you know, this is really almost revolutionary. And uh, I, I've, always, I've always thought the game has figured it out. We, we've, we've tried to tell coaches to go from yelling to telling to asking and you've taken that to another level here of understanding as well as communicating with parents now what advice would you have for coaches that might be listening to this like myself uh, that coach the way we coach typically yeah well and again i mean i i'll be honest with you like i i would have super apprehensive about a lot of the, a lot of the, um, you know, the ideas that we had, and a lot of it is, you know, I never coached. Like I reached out to you, Wally, because I'd never coached my daughter. I mean, I, I'd helped out a little bit, but I reached out because, okay, well, like, what are the? Here's this is what I see, and so what, you know, um, what should you try here? So I was apprehensive about not having them play positions, about lack of, you know, not lack of structure, but just you know, not giving them, you know, every detail, but I'll, I'll tell you a little story. So I learned a very valuable lesson in coaching pro um, played, you know, obviously uh, played a while and then was able to, to give them the responsibility of the power play. And so I, my first year coaching the power play, I had every detail at, at, at every, like all these plays and all these, all these different scenarios and this and this and that. And I remember the players coming to the bench and just looking and just with like, just fear in their eyes. And it, it clued on me at that point. I'm like, I'm giving them way too much information. They're not able to play. Like I got that, I got that sense. So, you know, part of that has always stuck with me and whether it's, and that's coaching pros. So, you know, but so, you know, that idea is always stuck in my head. So, to ask to, to, to articulate is to someone who's watching this as far as coaching kids. Like, I think you have to take the same approach. Like, yeah, we understand the game at a certain level and you understand that you want the breakouts to look a certain way and, and, and everything to look a certain way, but they have to, they have to figure that out on themselves, by themselves in how time and space relates to everything. And I, and, and, that's if there was one thing to say that that's what I would say is that as a coach it's up to you it's up to you to be able to clear out the path in regards to you know all the all the the minutiae and to be able to just boil it down to the point where they're not where they're not having to think about it where the all the only thing they're worried about is how do I manipulate time and space and so when that goes into you know, whether it's puck protect or whether, whatever that is. And so uh, that was what I would say, Wally. Well, I, the three P's that you mentioned, your system, it's your four check, it's your D zone cover, it's your power play with three simple words. Um, when you don't have the puck, it, it's pressure. And then possession, when you get it, play and that's all you've really done in your systems coaching and everybody's got one two 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 one two pinch one side don't it's an all tell to or structured power plays and you know there, there has to be a degree of organizational structure like with your stockton pro team of course a starting point but when uh, tom malloy was on and uh, i asked him a question about what do you get from all this, Tom? And he, I think Tom's got it from the beginning. Well, you're playing one, two, three, four, five hockey. And it's that simple. And you've simplified it to a degree that's paying off. And I just wonder if it will ever get to the mass of coaches or just a few coaches who have, you know, had the fortune of uh, the patience to try it and experiment with it. Uh, I've watched this happen in novice hockey where giving them a simple picture of structure, 
and let them play. And I've seen it happen. And I've seen the results in novice and Adam hockey. And a great experience. Now, you mentioned back there, you're working with the San Jose minor hockey female side. And, and you thought you were going to try to implement them or convince them to implement this system. Do you think that'll happen there? Well, I, I'm, I'm hopeful, right? I'm hopeful. And I think my, you know, my, my, my hope is that, because it's a very small community, a hockey community in general, whether it's in Canada or San Jose, especially here in San Jose, it's a, it's a, it's a smaller group. So there's parents that are on this team that have boys that play, that have all, all other, you know, kids within the organization. And so my hope is, is that just like anything, that's their, their experience, hopefully, you know, they share that, that the experience that their child is having and how, how, how much fun and how enjoyable it is to play. And then hopefully that, you know, piques someone's interest and like, well, okay, well, what are you guys doing? And, and I, I hope that it organically spreads in that way, because at the end of the day, for me, the biggest thing is, is that the kids want to come back and play. Right. And so ultimately that, that needs to be the driving piece for me. And I think all this just ensures that obviously, Hey, listen, I, I, I love it. Like I get giddy thinking when I watch this power play and they're, and they're playing around and they're, they're, you know, making all these skills. But for me, that's all for not if they don't enjoy coming and, and being a part of it. So I think that, and again, I guess, you know, part of you, it would like to be like, I have a daughter who's 10 U as well. And I was out um, with her practice the other day, just yesterday. And my hope would be that there's no reason why you couldn't have the same concepts. And, and to think if you were to have the 10 U's be able to start to play this way, like my, my hope, my want is, is that you would have people clamoring to get within, within the organization based on the fact that like you're, you're, you're emphasizing, you know, their, the, 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 the ability of the kids to be able to just play and they're getting, and they're getting quote unquote better, but ultimately they want to come back and play. Cause that's ultimately what it, to me, that's ultimately what it's, what it's about. Like, why do you put your kids in it? You want them to be active and then it gets more complicated. But if the kids are the ones that are, that are legitimately wanting to get in there and want to play, I mean, parents will follow ultimately, but I, my hope is that that will happen. It seems like it's getting, gaining some traction because as I say, like, if you just, again, you look on just results in prior years, uh, like they don't think they scored a goal last year. Right. And, and when they, they went to one of these tournaments and it, it, like, never mind being in the, in like a part. And that's, that's not how I deem like uh, value success or determine what success is, but It's a great story, Dom, and uh, <clears throat> it was many years ago that it, I I got the wake up call, coaching a, a number of national women in at the Olympic Oval in Calgary, and I was evaluated by Dr. Joan Vickers and her class, and it was on coaching communication, and she's the researcher after the game. Uh, her class watch, they observe, they look at how I coached. And I was actually called into my boss's office about the practice because I didn't get a very good assessment. And I was a pretty good traditional coach. I taught and I directed them. I gave them all the instruction. And the word was, I just told them what to do the whole time. They never let them figure everything out. I didn't teach them to think for themselves. And I, I reson that resonated with me. It was really huge. It was a, had I not had that embarrassing moment being called to the office thinking I was the best coach in the world, boy, to be able to realize you, 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 you make a mistake, that's probably the best quality is if something isn't working 
and I find something that's really new. That was it, and this is it now, 20 years later. And to see you doing what you're doing out there and taking it to another level, I just, uh, I just hope we can can make a an impact on the overall game where wherever the, it's played. So the players have a heck of a lot more fun. The coaches have fun, and the parents are on the same team, and it's all together. It's the way it should be. So, I re I really want to thank you, Dom, for uh, the time, and uh, I'm going to ask you to send me the uh, entire thing to me, and I can yeah. I can. Sh what I'll usually do is, just like with Dunk Jungle Jim Jim Hunter session, I videoed and separated his talk. And then the Q and A separately, yeah. And then I broke up about twenty little segments of his talk that might deliver messages. So I'm going to do the same with this, and share it with coaches. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's all for the good of the game. I, I really want to thank you for your time on a Sunday. Uh, it's no still problem. morning. No problem. Nine forty nine forty two out there. Ten forty two in Calgary. The day after Halloween in 2020 COVID. I want to thank you very, very <laughs> much, Tom. And uh, we'll sign off now and we'll chat again probably before Thursday Skype call, of course. Sounds good, Wally. I'll, I'll stop this and I'll send this over to you. Okay, take care. Thanks, Wally. Okay, bye-bye.